Whoa. Hey guys, welcome to this episode of How to Flip Your Bedroom with your host, the interior designers with the mostest. Coming through into this grand master bedroom, we can see that it looks outdated. It is old. It is. It has got big pyramids from the 1980s. Who does that? Oh, not me, no. So I'm gonna take you through what I plan to do and what I see this room as being after its renovation. The first thing we're gonna do is remove these hideous pelmets. Now these pelmets have been here for, I would say about 20 years and the dust shows on them. Yes, nasty. With that, we're gonna be taking off these disgusting curtains which are absolutely filthy. Ew, they have not been changed also in 20 years. I can take off all of these curtains all the way through the bedroom. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this bit of a, a sprucing up. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna paint all of the trims a nice white gloss color so it's nice and fresh. And then finally, we're gonna paint this magnolia color away. And again, we're gonna go for a vivid white so that it brings out a bit of light into this beautiful room because it's such a fantastic space. It's got a phenomenal view in the morning when the daytime is up and really just wanna see it sparkle. The next thing we're gonna do after that, once all the painting is done, is this is the location for the bed. Now, whether that's gonna be a king or a queen bed, we're not too sure, but behind this disgusting curtain over here is a window which is never in use. And so once it's all been cleaned out, we're gonna consider perhaps covering up this wall and placing some beautiful mirrors behind the headboard of the table uh, of the bed and giving it some nice reflection from the gorgeous view that we have in the gallery area. Get a ladder, I need to get a screwdriver, um, I need to get everything, I just need to rip everything off. And then I'm gonna take down the curtains, I'm so excited to take them down because they look filthy. When we first moved in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when she took down the curtains, she hoarded them for six months, we still got them because she had dreams and ambitions to sell them on Gumtree. Yeah. She was like, these are expensive curtains. Yeah. People want this. I did, I did, and legit no one came. <laughs> Not even for free. <laughs> Not even for free. But you know what, I'm glad that I never sold them because actually I actually needed them. So actually removing the palm, seems to be pretty straightforward. I'll show you the type of screws there are and how to lift it up. So there is a screw right at the top there, which is holding the palm in, and you can just unscrew that. And do the same for this side as well. Again, unscrew the one at the top there, plus the bracket, and then you should be able to easily lift up the palmet and remove it. this is oh my goodness look how filthy this is gross so much dust oh, this has got to be the most unhygienic feature you can have in a room for curtains um, there's no way you can clean this it's just filthy and just take a look at how big the room looks without it Ew. look at that it's so much more open it's so much nicer <gasps> onwards and upwards I have to say, these curtains are so filthy, they are in dire need of a replacement. Just look at the yellow staining, like I get it, there's obviously sun exposure, but that is just rancid. God, I don't even want to put this on my carpet, it's so disgusting. What I will do is I'll just fold it up and I'm gonna place the palettes on top of it so that I don't get my lovely carpet dirty. Oh boy. Ooh. Sometimes you just gotta do things in life that are just disgusting and you don't wanna do it, but you have to do it for the sake of your own health. This cannot be healthy. There's literal mold. Oh, it's mold. There's mold on the curtain. Oh my God. Filthy, filthy, filthy. Phew. Let's put this on here. I 
cannot wait to throw these away at the skip. So you'll notice that there are some brackets on the top. That is where the pelmet was hooked onto. I'm going to move those very shortly because they are a bit tougher and they will require an electric drill. But I'm going to go around and I might actually just do... I'll do this one first because that's going to be the main event. And then we'll go on and we'll do the right side. Ah, exciting! What I might do, and probably what I'll suggest to you guys as well, is take down the curtains before you take off the curtain rail. It makes things a lot lighter. So I'm going to go ahead and just take off the curtains first. So filthy. Oh, yuck. Now that those curtains are down, it's time to take off the pelmet, which again is going to be pretty straightforward. Unscrew the top half of the pelmet and then pull up the whole pelmet together and then take it off. look at the room without any pelmets. It sounds different actually, the echo, there's more echo in the room. It looks, it looks empty. It looks empty, it looks clean, it looks flush. I'll show you guys what I mean. No more pelmets around the room and very shortly there'll be no more curtain rails as well. Right, now that those pelmets are removed it's time to get rid of these curtain rails and get this room in shape again. Oh my days. Now I've opted to keep these curtains on because they're very light. Um, and I'm just going to go on with the job. So I had a bit of difficulty taking out this last screw over here. And the reason being is because there was a latch on screw and as you can see there is a bit of damage in the Jiprock. Yeah, I mean the problem with Jiprock or this kind of plasterboard is the nails don't hold on or attach onto the wall so you have to use these nails that basically go in and they open up as they hit the other side which is probably what we're gonna have to use going forward but it does create a lot of damage to the Jiprock and I'm gonna have to just tidy it up when we get to that stage. It's hard work. <laughs> um, I'm happy, I'm almost there but it's hard work, it's very hot and yeah it's a good form of exercise. Onwards and upwards. Oh, it's made out of wood. Oh, it's so heavy. Do you not hear it crash on the floor? Wow. So it's just wood. That's all it is. It's just wood with a bit of sheet of fabric on it. Mm -hmm. So that's what made that big bump. They need to have a different tour, so perhaps I'm going to go and grab an electric screwdriver and maybe even take a bit of water and a bit of a break. But generally speaking, oh boy, this has been an exhilarating experience. Taking off with helmets, the room looks a lot clearer. It looks, it sounds different as well. It's less echoey. Sorry, it's more echoey. It's less, I just feel like there's less germs now. There's a huge pile of rubbish on the floor and on the next episode, join me as I clear up all of the screws around the area and also fill in those nasty holes we've got where the nails have been left off and then we'll be on to painting. Whew. Hope you guys found this video useful and if you have any questions or comments don't hesitate to drop me line in the comments below. I don't think I'm going to be able to answer any of your questions because I'm not a professional whatsoever. This is the first time I've been doing this. If you have a tip for me of how to remove these horrible nails that are stuck in the jip rock, I would love to know that. Thanks guys, I'll see you soon. Whew. The only thing I'm a bit annoyed about is one, some of the holes, screws are really hard to get rid of, and two, when you pull them out, it destroys the plasterboard. But I have a good friend, aka my husband, who's a plasterer. I love all the plastering things. <laughs> oh, those are nice guns.
I don't even work out anymore. All I do is dig <laughs> household work. <laughs> All right, so I've been instructed by the big boss to take off the rails and the clamps on the walls for this. You can't use a screwdriver, but it's a lot easier to use a power tool. Uh, this is a basic power tool. It's kind of like the Ikea one that you get. And to use this one, you just use the standard Phillips head screw, pop it in there. The key setting to play with, and all drills are slightly different, is the torque setting. So torque is the amount of power you're going to be using. If you have a torque setting of one, it's going to be very, very light and gentle. I'm going to bump mine all the way up to number six, which is the most powerful one. And I'll take you guys with me on removing these rails. So to get this guy off, I really need to angle the screw over this way, the drill bit, the screw bit over this angle and fit it in. And there you go, just watch it rip out. It's wobbling, that means it's out. There you go, just like that. Now, just gonna position the leather slightly to the left and get the other two. I'm gonna save the middle one for last to save the frame from collapsing. And it's wobbling, that means it's done. Just push it upwards, feed it in there. And that is it. Boom, boom, boom. Shake the room. This screw isn't even in the wall. You see that the wall's completely been butchered as it is. So that was bad. <laughs> Another screw's right next to it. Past owners of the house have had some fun. Ooh, a bit of screw. Drywall needs to be replaced a bit. I'll fix that up. So if you do struggle, what I tend to do is really push down forward and push into the gap. And that kind of helps it come off. Yuck. So this, so this guy will actually just fall off the wall with a bit of time because it's just glue that holds it together. I'm just gonna pull it down, help out in life. There you go. And it's currently just held up because it's balanced on the ends. So as soon as I take it out, as soon as I take it out, look at that, stretches. So they've taken a normal, run and just bent it physically with their hands to fit in that cove. All right, so this one is a plastic wall anchor. Easy, putty knife, dig it around it. It just comes off very simply. Just dig into it and pull. And you can literally just take the rest off of your hand. So just digging it out like that. And pulling with my hand just gets it out very simply. The metal ones, they are, oh, these guys are hard, 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 hard. I'll show you this one. This one, you need to dig into it. Twist, 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 twist it up. I'm pretty much trying to break off the front of it. So twist, 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 twist it up. Twist, 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 twist it up. Other side, twist, dig underneath. And we're gonna try taking the top off. These are very, very challenging. Just, yeah, once you get enough movement in it, sometimes they just pop off really simply. But once you get enough of a gap, you can then use your pliers and just crush, crush that top. So crushed it once and pull as you crush it and it will come off. This is the top of it. Throw that crap out away and then you're left with this part. So the easiest thing to do, it seems like everyone seems to be doing it, is just push it inside the hole and hope. You know, he lives with your house foundations. Whereas with the metal ones, oh, they are just a burden. They wouldn't come out like that one. Uh, pliers are your friend. Pop in the inside, into the wall. Okay, yeah, this is an, another type of wall anchor. For this one, it's actually a lot easier. Uh, you can use a Phillips head screwdriver and just unscrew it out. Look at that magic. 
You just use a little screwdriver for these ones. All right, now that's done. I'm gonna go through every single part of the wall and just clean it up a little bit. So starting on this side, just there. It's great. Cool. Now we're gonna have to re-silicone this stuff up. Afterwards, but for now, let's just get rid of it. 